Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'd like to show you how I built this DIY outdoor dining table with 2x8s and 4x4s utilizing the Craig XL pocket hole jig. We've also got free plans linked in the description. Now let's get started. I built the top for my outdoor dining table out of five eight foot long two by eights. I hunted through the boards that Home Depot had available and I tried to get the straightest ones with as little warping as possible. I cut about 18 inches off of each board before the glue up with my Craig portable cross cut. This tool is so cool, it allows me to measure and mark the line I actually want to cut instead of measuring and marking for the offset of the circular saw bed and the blade. But make sure and keep these 18 inch pieces for later, we will be using them on our benches. And to join this tabletop together, I'm gonna to be using the new Craig Jig XL. This is specifically designed for thicker material, like the two x eight and four x eight lumber we're using in today's project. This is quick to set up, just adjust for what material thickness you're using and check out the difference in size between the traditional Craig Jig bit and the XL. This is supposed to create a four times stronger joint and I'm really excited to give it a try. After I set the depth stop on my bit, just like a standard Craig jig, I then clamped it in place and started drilling where I wanna connect my boards together. In total, I drilled five pocket holes along one edge of four of my boards. The fifth board for my tabletop won't need any. And really quick, I do want to shout out the Craig Track Horses with a built-in T-Track. This allows me to surface clamp using bench clamps and hold everything in place. They are super convenient and a really good value. I'll make sure and leave a link to all of the tools, materials, and supplies I used in the description box below. These are two and a half inch Craig Jig XL pocket screws. They're outdoor rated and incredibly heavy duty. Check out how big it is in comparison to a standard two and a half inch pocket screw. Along with five of those screws on each edge, I loaded up a lot of wood glue where each of my boards join. This way it'll be an incredibly strong bond and all of those pocket screws will clamp it in place while the glue dries. I used a Craig six inch face clamp everywhere that I screwed my boards together to make sure that they were on the same plane vertically. And right here, you can see me using a wood block just to distribute that pressure a little bit more on some of the more inconsistent boards. Like I mentioned, I did use a lot of glue, but I made sure to spread it out before I put my boards in place. I also made sure to clean up any squeeze out before I had an opportunity to dry. This makes the sanding process so much easier. After I cleaned all of my seams, I let the glue dry a couple hours before I flipped it over and prepped to cut it square on the ends. This tool reminds me a lot of the Craig Portable Crosscut. It's got these built-in guides that allow me to measure and mark the line I wanna cut and then move them out of the way before I take a pass with my circular saw. And pro tip, pine does have a tendency to tear out, so taking multiple passes does help. You can also put painter's tape on your cut line and that'll prevent it absolutely. Ultimately though, nothing is better than a new finish blade. And that is how you build a really heavy duty tabletop. And I'm gonna set that aside while we move on. And now it's time to start building the base. I started by grabbing my three straightest four by fours of the bunch that I bought. And these pieces will be used for my 68 inch long stretchers. These are the longest pieces of the project, which is why I'm cutting them first. Just like before, I'm using my Craig portable cross cut again, but because these posts are so thick, I need to cut halfway through the board and then flip it over and cut the rest of the way through. I made sure that these boards were 10 inches shorter than the length of my tabletop, including the width of our two frames. This will allow for an inch and a half overhang between the base and the top. And with that done, I started cutting the 4x4s for the frame legs. These are really simple and they are utilizing the Craig Jig XL perfectly because we're not going to be able to see any visible fasteners. And for the frames, I needed four pieces at 28 and a half inches tall and four more at 23 and a half. I quickly adjusted my Craig Jig XL to accommodate three and a half inch thick boards, which these 4x4s are, and I drilled two pocket holes everywhere my boards are butt joining together. And on all of these boards, I picked the ugliest face to attach my pocket screws on. That way they would either be facing another board and be invisible or facing down at the floor and people won't be able to see them either. 
Each of the stretchers got a couple pocket screws on each end. This is where they'll connect to the frame legs. There's two stretchers on the top and one on the bottom of the base. And for the frame legs, I only needed to drill pocket holes onto the shorter leg pieces. These are the ones that will run horizontally and connect to our verticals. In this shot, you can see how each of our frame legs assemble is a really simple square connected with these four inch long XL pocket screws. After adding glue to my joint, I clamped my pieces down in place and then started screwing all of them together. Being able to pocket screw together such large chunks of lumber like these 4x4s is very cool. I was able to get this really rustic, chunky piece and it went together surprisingly easy. After the first frame was assembled, I repeated those steps to create the second and then it was time to start laying everything out to connect our stretchers. Looking good so far. So I am very impressed with the Craig XL. These legs are very, very strong and the glue hasn't dried. So next we're gonna attach the three four by four stretchers that are gonna connect these two leg assemblies. Two of the stretchers will be on the tabletop side. This will help prevent the tabletop from dipping or bowing. And there's one stretcher on the bottom in the center. That way it's out of the way of people's feet. And you'll notice all of my pocket screws are facing the floor or facing the tabletop so you don't really see them. I also included a few more pocket holes on the inside of the top of our stretcher. That way we can connect our base and top with more of the two and a half inch pocket screws. I was really careful to make sure all of my offsets were consistent and my base was centered on the top. There should be a three and a half inch overhang along each edge of the table and an inch and a half overhang on each end. I also added a little bit of scrap wood to add some feet risers. This is gonna give my base a little bit of a floating effect. I like it, but it's totally not necessary. And finally, all that was left on the dining table was to use wood filler anywhere that my lumber had some imperfections and then sand everything up to 220 grit in preparation for the wood finish that I'm using. And now we officially know how to build this outdoor dining table and we're about to create a set of matching benches. So you remember those 18 inch long two by eight pieces, the leftovers from the tabletop that we made earlier? Well, this is what we're gonna use for the legs of our base. After I put some pocket screws to connect two of them together to create the outside of each leg, I then cut a four by four inch stretcher that's gonna be the spine in each of these benches. That way the two by eight top that we put on it won't flex or bend no matter how many people sit on it. I also needed to cut a couple of 14 and a half inch long pieces to pair with our 18 inch legs and then drill pocket holes in all of my four by fours. In this shot, you'll see each of the leg assemblies come together. You can see how on the outside, it's two two by eights as the outside face. And then there's this four by four right in the center that's gonna pair with the four by four spine. And that's gonna carry all of the weight of this whole assembly. These four inch pocket screws are crazy strong, but the great part is all of the weights just going right down on the four by four block. So it's not even stressing the screw or the glue holding everything together. And it was very handy to clamp my pieces in place while I was screwing it together. But now you can see how the base of each bench is built. Once I had one, I just repeated the same steps to create the base for bench number two. I did do a quick strength test to make sure everything was going well, which it was and then I could cut and attach my two by eights for the top. I made sure to space these top boards out a little bit, that way water wouldn't get trapped in between them. And then I used my Craig Jig drill bit to recess some screw heads from the top face of the boards into the base. This is really nice because I can screw everything together and then plug everything up with a 3 8 inch dowel and no one will ever see any visible fasteners. After the glue dried, I came back with a flush trim saw to saw the dowels flush. Ha, go figure. Finally, all that was left to do was sand down my benches to 150, then 220 grit to match my dining table and then apply two coats of outdoor water-based spar urethane. I chose a satin finish, that way it wouldn't reflect a lot in the sun. I also thought it would weather better over time, but I am very impressed in the color in the wood that I was able to get, and I think it looks awesome. And with that, our outdoor dining table and bench set is done. All right, I'll say it. This might be my favorite pocket hole jig project that I've built. 
Getting to use the XL and incorporate it with 4x4 lumber and 2x8s was a ton of fun and really gratifying. I think this would look great on anybody's front or back porch to eat at. I could also see this working great at restaurants, breweries, or anywhere else that there's outdoor entertaining. If you're interested in building a project like this for yourself, make sure and check out the plans linked down in the description, and I really appreciate you watching. The size of this project is great for my front porch, and it is nice how the benches can stow underneath. Super pro. So seriously, thanks a ton for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project. Be sure to click subscribe to the Craig YouTube channel below, and you can find me on YouTube, Instagram, everywhere at Modern Builds. And if you do end up building a table like this, I'd love to see, make sure and tag me. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.